Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Lasker. Welcome to my channel and I am going to be doing a very, very important video. I'm going to finally answer a question that's asked to me so much across the board, across social media, on a personal basis. Random people getting my phone number and asking me about these things. So I thought, you know what, let's try and help you lot out there. For those that are considering radiology as a career, those that are in radiology as a career, those that are thinking about possibly doing this particular thing I'm really talking about, this may be relevant to you. So we're talking about teleradiology. What is it? Who is it? Why? Who? What? Where? When? I mean, there are so many questions about teleradiology and something that has well, intrigued me since the beginning of even going into radiology in the first place. For those that don't know, imagine like a radiologist being some sort of highly intelligent being that is looking through scans. And then over time, what has happened is thanks to the dawn of the internet, we're now able to have images from one part of the country or world coming across to this highly intelligent being and being able to actually interpret the images and send it all the way back. So technically you don't have to be in the same physical space as the scan is being done. You don't have to be anywhere near it. Thanks to the internet, you can be very, very far away. And there are radiologists who are working far away abroad, such as Australia, doing the night shifts for here, we're doing the day shifts over there. And as time has gone on, these highly intelligent beings have become sort of able to communicate with one another with these distant places via teleradiology companies. A bit like Skynet bringing everyone together um, towards world domination. So there are a number of teleradiology providers out there. Some are big, some of the small, some are very niche, some of them only specifically work for certain areas. Now, when I was training, it was a big deal. People were really worried, like, oh, you know, our workers are going to go abroad. We're not going to be able to keep working our borders. Maybe we should build a, a wall. The thing is, there is so much work out there that it doesn't really matter who is doing the scan as long as they're competent. Now, what you will find is that there are some local policies or local nuances that exist. So in some countries, there are diseases that are more prevalent than other countries. And even on a local level, sometimes doctors or clinicians like to have reports in a certain way. So being a teleradiologist can be very, very challenging. Now, if you go on the internet, there are multiple companies out there. What they essentially do is get the backlogs from hospitals up and down the country. Some of them actually cater for the private sector where people are coming in getting a scan and then waiting for the report to come through. And these scans are being sent across the internet via an online platform. And then the radiologist is able to log in, dictate the report and send it back. Now, like I said, it can be a bit, bit of a challenging atmosphere when you're doing teleradiology because the whole thing does feel a little bit impersonal. People don't really know who you are. The local doctors don't know who you are. And sometimes that can raise a few issues. Now, some of the questions that come up to me very, very regularly is first off, who can do it. Now, generally speaking, anyone who is qualified to look at any sort of imaging should be able to do teleradiology. Now, different countries have different qualifications that one may need. So for example, if I was gonna do something like teleradiology in America, I would need to be board certified. If I want to do teleradiology in Australia, then I would need to be certified. This does also mean that you don't technically have to be a doctor to be reporting scans. You can be a reporting radiographer. Now, let's say, for example, you're like me, you're a radiologist, maybe you're a newly qualified radiologist. Is this place for you? Now, it used to be some companies require that you are a consultant for at least two years. So there's no way to even get in in the game of teleradiology unless you've been qualified as a consultant working within the NHS or within a base hospital for two years. Actually, things have changed quite a lot. And over time, what has happened that yes, there are some companies that are still required to work for at least two years, but now they've started to have starter programs. As long as your final year radiologist in training, you're deemed qualified by the teleradiology company and your seniors, then you are able to get onto some sort of work. This may be uh, reporting some plain x-rays, maybe doing some emergency work, maybe even just doing some vetting where you're kind of going through scans and stratifying what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and how soon it needs to be done. And this is where I'm going to have a quick shout out to my sponsors. Now, Medica is one of the biggest companies that provide teleradiology service up and down the country. In fact, they have been around for a very, very long time. And up till recently, you did have to be a consultant for at least two years. But now they actually have a new starter program. For anyone that is a new radiologist that wants to start into the world of teleradiology, then you can think about signing up to Medica where they will ease you in and give you the support that you need to go into fully flourishing teleradiology career. Medica even have an earnings calculator so by contacting the team via the link in the description below you'll be able to access it and have a bit of an idea about what you could be earning. 
Thank you Medica for sponsoring this video and if you are interested in doing teleradiology for Medica then do check them out. Now where does teleradiology and all this stuff fit in with, with everything really? Because I know that when I was a trainee I was expected to go into a normal hospital job and continue with my path and go hopefully do the, the standard stuff, right? Become well known at the department, become the go-to person, run lots of MDTs, then get invited to do some private work and then happily ever after, right? But the thing is, that is one way of doing life and actually as time has gone on I've started to realize there are plenty of ways to actually do and live the way that you want to live and have a career that you want to have. So if you are the kind of person that wants to do teleradiology completely there are some companies that would actually support you doing so. It is a complete personal preference. There are some situations where you can do a combination of the two. Some days where you work at a base hospital and some days where you work doing just teleradiology. Now teleradiology is actually seen as private work, we're doing work outside of work, which then subsequently opens a different way of thinking about things, right? So the teleradiology companies themselves have specific standards which are met by auditing. And that could be really daunting, especially for a new radiologist. Now, for people that don't understand what auditing is, what happens is that a certain percentage of your work is looked at by either a panel of experts or they are looked at by your peers. So they've randomly allocated, they're anonymized, and then they're shared out and then people start to give each other scores where they agree, disagree, or where there has been any big misses. Now I know when I was beginning, I found that really, really difficult, really difficult to deal with because you're coming in as a new radiologist, you don't feel particularly confident anyway. Most of the time you feel like you're winging it and then someone says, you know what, you could have done that scan better. But as time has gone on, I started to realize that if you take it the right way, then it's actually not that bad. It's actually a way to help you become a better radiologist. Now, what I found as a teleradiology has enabled me to see more scans than most people would over a given period of time. And so therefore, a lot of work gets to be audited by people that are more senior than myself, or at least at the same level, even when I do the audit of other people, it can be really interesting to see the way that someone describes something and then maybe even incorporate that into my own work. The whole point of auditing is to try and make the outcome better for everyone, for the, yourself, the hospital that's getting the report, and ultimately the patient. From a teleradiology point of view, you have to understand that the, the report is kind of a product. I mean, that is what they're selling to the vendors, which are the hospitals or the private scanners. And so therefore it is within their best interest to try and make sure that product is as good as possible. So with that in mind, you have to try and understand that when you're working for the teleradiology companies, this is not a situation where they're trying to catch you out. They are actually trying to help you become better so they can make their product better and therefore be able to give a better service to their clients. Now next is the very uncomfortable question that people often ask me, how much can someone make doing teleradiology? Now, there are differing amounts and values that are out there. It can be astronomical, some of the values that go out there. And if you look on the internet, then you will see that there, they have actually said that some radiologists make quite a lot of money out of this. Now, the thing is, the way I see it, and the way I think everyone should take it, is that your work is your work. It doesn't matter where your work is getting done, and it doesn't matter what price tag is affixed to that work, right? The work is independent of absolutely everything else, whether you're at your base hospital, whether you're in the private sector, and whether you're sitting at home with your computers on a desk and reporting. The work quality should always be the same. And with that in mind, it genuinely is, particularly at the present time, you get paid as much as you work, right? So if you want to sit there and work all day, eight, nine hours doing teleradiology, then yeah, I think you're going to do quite well. But then it becomes a balance between like life and, and work, right? Because you end up in the situation where work is pretty much on tap. I mean, there are so many scans that need to be done. You could sit there and work all day and it will never finish. There's just so many scans that are coming in, right? So you could find yourself in the situation where you're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, you know what? That new Star Wars is out. I might watch that. Or I could do some more scans. Or, oh, um, my, I need to go to my in-laws, but I don't want to go there. I could just go do more scans. Oh, you know what? Uh, my friends are trying to meet up for dinner. But the thing is, um, I could just go and sit and do more scans. And you can see how that can start to creep into to everything, really. You stop going to the gym. You stop seeing your friends. You stop seeing your family. You stop seeing colleagues. Which may be the ultimate dream. <laughs> so... Should you do it? I mean, I think that if you are a new radiologist and it is something that has piqued an interest in you, then I don't see any reason why you should not at least try it. At least try it, see what it's like, sign up to one of the companies, maybe even check out the sponsors of this video and see what you think. 
It may be something that you quite like and actually a really great tool to try and become a better radiologist. For me personally, I have found that it has helped me an enormous amount. There are check areas that I, don't, I didn't used to have. There are ways of saying things that I didn't used to say. So I hope that was useful. Um, I really, really do hope that you find it useful. Do leave a comment, ask me any questions. I really, really don't mind. The point in this channel and all of the stuff that I do is try and bring as much value to you as possible. Thank you so much. Do check out the sponsors of this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.